I was, um, some years ago I was a physician um, uh, on the faculty at Hopkins, an anesthesiologist, mother of three, and uh, in 2006 I was diagnosed with leukemia, and it had a pretty poor prognosis. Um, and uh, after some years of being sick, I was introduced to the possibility of being a participant in the study, in, as a volunteer in the study in, of, of cancer and post-traumatic stress at Hopkins. Hopefully that light is bright. And um, um, I just, I'm just here to share as a volunteer that um, the, res the impact that that study had on my life was enormous and has continued to be um, from the initial time that I spent with Mary, who was my guide, um, and the whole sort of family um, in the, uh, who, who run the study, um, and, and the safety that I felt to be able to let go and face some demons and um, go deep into some pretty difficult and um, and uh, sad places, uh, grieving the loss of my career, of my motherhood, of really my whole identity, um, the loss of my father who had recently died, um, and then just a bunch of child, childhood sort of traumas um, was, you know, it, it was just amazing how that allowed for me to open up to self-empathy um, and sort of melt the walls of post-traumatic stress and then turn around and make enormous changes in my life, really drastic, enormous changes that um, were a part of like sort of like starting all over again and um, and I've since gone on to continue with meditation I've pulled in all kinds of alternative care modalities into my life um, I've continued to open up to other ideas and other studies and other practices to bring myself back to that essence that I found uh, during the study so my life has just gotten better and better and better and better and you know um, I'm just here as a talking example, not a statistic, not a, you know, um, a story on paper, but just to share with you that, in fact, um, it, it's amazing work, and I'm so, like, I felt like I won the lottery when I uh, qualified for the study, and I still do. So, and if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer. Any questions? Did it help me in a psychological way? Yes. I think I think that um, there's a part of healing, you know, spiritual healing, where you learn about taking care of yourself. And I, I, Gabor Mate talks about, you know, the idea of, you know, the, it's, it's a pretty significant number of medical people, medical students, who uh, ignore their bodies and what they need. And part of this awakening, this spiritual awakening, was about taking care of myself. And so in that way, I've, you know, uh, it's sort of like I'm not addicted to bad habits. I was able to sleep better. I had much less stress and anxiety, and that led to you know um, eating healthier and exercising and choosing healthier options in my life. And so in that way, yeah, it may have saved my life. It may have turned that last you know dormant cancer cell away. So. I, I, do, I do believe that in some ways my life was saved by the study in that law, you know, sort of that, you know, sort of indirect way. Yeah. Did you receive it before chemo? No, I didn't. Um, I had gone through 
uh, pretty intense chemotherapy, full body radiation, bone marrow transplant, and I don't know, four years or so of severe complications from rejection. And when I was stable enough, I did the study. And by then I had undergone quite a bit of, of trauma. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Did you? No. no. If, if uh, someone was terminally ill with cancer and they weren't familiar with the psychedelic experience and had a, a jaded view of psychedelics as a whole, would you have any advice in talking to them? About yeah. The yeah, that's a really good question. Somebody asked that when I talked yesterday. The question was, if there were, if you knew somebody who uh, who were terminal, or even, I, guess, I guess even not terminal, right, who was sort of opposed or hadn't heard of these studies, um, how would you talk to them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's a really important idea to try and get more and more volunteers to voice their stories because, you know, I'm just a normal sort of subject, um, you know, pretty, you know, sort of productive, credible person in the community um, who took on this uh, unusual, you know, sort of treatment for my post-traumatic stress. And, uh, I mean, you could share that story, but I think people who have been through this experience would have a lot of help, you know, words to give you to help to convince people or um, offer the op option. Uh, it's not for everybody, but for those who choose it, it's, it, you know, just, it would be. Just a follow-up even more specifically, uh, how do you even broach the subject to find out if they're having a hard time with it? I think it's, I think it, you, you know, um, I was really resistant to the idea that I had post-traumatic stress. I was in deep denial of that. I didn't want any other diagnosis. Um, but my, mm, my behaviors were clearly, you know, showing that I had post-traumatic stress. I wasn't sleeping. My relationships were falling apart. You know, I was uh, behaviorally really, you know, having a lot of panic attacks. Um, I couldn't focus or concentrate. I was really a sort of um, distracted by the idea of dying. So in that way, like if you can be vocal and, you know, educate people as to what post-traumatic stress looks like, you don't even have to label it. You know, it's just about feeling better and being able to live again. And that's really what this brought me to, is, is being alive again, honestly. Uh, how many psilocybin sessions did you receive, and how quickly did you start to feel a benefit from it? So I had two sessions. They were about a month apart, about a month and a week apart. Um, and uh, it was immediately after the first session that I began to make huge changes in my life. I saw, like, a, like it was like a fog lifted, and I could see clearly what steps I needed to take to, make, to ensure my happiness and my health my mental health, and uh, it was immediate. It was it was immediate. It was during the session, really, that I started to have all these insights and downloads about what might uh, lead me to health. Would you would you describe it as a mystical experience, as as that's defined by people who have given talks here? Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, it was a very it was one, one of, if not the most memorable experience of my life. Absolutely. Um, I came to it as a, as a pure scientist, atheist. It took me a while to bring mysticism or spirit into my language, um, but it's fully in there now. And it, I've grown into that realm, and I really feel like my spirit has awakened. And I, and I, I mean, I, mean I, I do activities that support that, that growth of my spirit, so. Uh, do you have any plans to, to try more psilocybin sessions, even if you can't get it in a, a research context? I, you know, um, I, I think where I'm leading is in the way, in the, 
I think when you start having an awakening like this and you learn a lot from your experience, the next sort of natural place to go is in service. So in some way, I want to help other people like this, like just speaking to you in whatever way I can. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm, wondering if you, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about um, your initial reaction to the idea of participating in the study. And um, I don't know if you've talked to other patients who participated, what their initial reactions were. And then as a doctor, um, what you thought going in and, and how other physicians have have talked about it when you've shared your experiences and what they've thought about the study? It's, you know, it's all over the place. For me, um, I, w I was a little bit afraid of it, you know. Um, I did have a small, one, one or two very light experiences with, with magic mushrooms in my 20s. Um, I knew this was going to be a, you know, much, much higher dose, but um, I just, you know, after speaking with the department and Mary and, and Dr. Griffiths and Matt and, you know, the whole group, I began to have a lot of trust in them and, um, and it was, I just was looking for, to feel better, to feel like I could li actually live my life and not be in this place of, of post-traumatic stress. So for me it was and I tried therapy and that wasn't working so um, it was it was just a, it felt like a courageous move to take take this and and trust in them and 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 they had pr provided me with a lot of statistics and past experiences with other volunteers which really helped um, some of my colleagues were are don't want to hear about it and some of my colleagues are really intrigued um, I gave a nice talk to the Department of Oncology, um, and it seemed really re well received, but it didn't generate a lot of more interest or patients. So I'm not really sure how to to do this except to just keep pushing forward and keep telling my story and getting other people to tell their story. And um, I do feel like there's a groundswell. I feel like. Um, the safety issue is being addressed really, really well. Uh, the, and the really safe way in which the, these studies are being conducted are getting out there and stories like mine are getting out there and hopefully it will be less of a fear for people, for physicians to suggest to their patients and for patients to actually take the chance and, and be a part of the study. Thank you guys.